I'm waiting to see because you know, I'm waiting to I see. Thought, this I thought this was such a popular area for it. I'm really expecting well, to see it. Well, you need to get a look at camera. Yeah. 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 Just, just to say, yeah. I mean, this, yeah. this is based on a pilot that took place in Bristol, yeah. which was incredibly successful. Yeah. And on the basis of that, the council's identified a program of, uh, of these posters going out across yeah. Wirral based on the hotspots where we've had the most yeah. uh, in, you know, reports of complaints. So these posters are going up. Um, in those hotspots over uh, over the next few months. Okay. Yeah. Just on that again, yes. if they have got a massive problem in that one area, is there no way that we can put that forward? Yeah. Or take it it's a question. Is there a question on you now? Okay. Right. Yes, gentlemen. Yeah. Could I? Don't, don't laugh at this, right? But there is, like, it's in the United States, right? And it's DNA analysis of dog poo. Yeah. And I think you'll come across this. And you may think this is stupid, right? But it's actually working in the United States. And I believe it's a franchise. They set up a franchise for it. Very American, right? But here's the point. Most people, when I walk and I cycle, and they get everybody in the world. It's disgraceful. Yeah. And it's not just, these aren't just toe records doing it, right? I live up, up uh, just near Birkenhead School, right? And there's people going walkies, right, with their dog, right, nobody's looking, it's dark, right, so they do it for whatever reason. Our park is, is both in park, again, it's there. However, here's the, here's the thought, right, if people know that they could possibly be, and it's a DNA swap, right, and basically if people know, if that fear of being prosecuted, right, and there's the evidence, right, DNA analysis, <coughs> Are you the gentleman who met me about this? Because I've actually, uh, what I couldn't work out was, so I've asked the library to tell me, has the DNA, um, uh, compulsory DNA of dogs come in here? I don't know, so I've asked the library this. No, that we need that before we can actually then trace back from the droppings to the dog. Ah. The, the roots are going, I thought about this, right, okay, so you have it's not, it's not, actually to do it by behavioural um, science, right, because the fear, the fear of being nicked, right, is what stop a lot of people doing. However, what you can do, very distasteful job, but you have the dog analysed, right, so it's there, and then you say to the dog owner, would you mind, particularly in the park, right, do you mind, if you come to this park, your dog will be subject to a, and you say, if they object, okay, please don't bring your dog into the park. Does that make sense? No, well, it seems to be better than that, isn't it? Because once the dogs, are, uh, uh, it's going to be compulsory that they are um, classified in this way. It doesn't matter whether they're doing it. I mean, you just have to pick up the pieces, so to speak, and you can trace back the owner. So that it, it won't even be a business having to catch them. It will be the evidence that's actually in the park, on the, on the street, in the, in the playing fields. Um, that will actually revolutionise this. And I, your point, I think, so is absolutely correct. Once we start getting the local newspapers and radio reporting, people are being fined. It will change behaviour. At the moment, it's it's a crime. It's a penalty-free crime, isn't it? Uh, Oh. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, two things, uh, very briefly. I, th I think the, um, certainly from what I read in other parts of the country, the ICE campaign has been uh, quite successful, but we do really do need the evidence, and we do need, well, at the moment, I'm not sure, because I know we've, we've, we've actually had the, the campaign in parts of Oxton, um, but we, I'm not sure we've necessarily done the evidence at the end of it to try and compare the amount of dog fouling before and after. Uh, there's not much point in just rolling it out unless we're really looking at it. The other thing is we frequently talk about how many prosecutions and the answer is virtually none. But what I, one statistic I would like to see is the number of, because before you can prosecute somebody you have to ask them, before you can give them a fixed penalty notice, you have to ask them to clear up the the mess. How many times do our dog wardens, I mean we must have statistics on how often they actually ask dog owners to clear, clear up the, and if those sort of statistics would be useful because that must have an impact on reducing the, the, the number of times that it happens. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, can we follow that up? I mean, well, um, <laughs> right. I mean the whole table is actually looking at the table. Right, it's Mrs. Payne's here. Sorry. Is, well, is, well, is, well, is, well, is Mrs. Payne's here? Uh, is um, Alan Darvish here? We will actually we will publish these in the minutes if we make the answers. Can I make a plea for that, uh, Joe, knowing we were under new management, so to speak, can we set a time limit for the questions so that answers can be prepared even by the planning department and got back to the relevant councils before the meeting? So that we, we are actually not doing what I'm doing, picking this up and trying to actually see which of but I thought that, um, I think Rob's point shows real value of these questions, because that will change policy. It will take time, uh, 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 but I think some of the, the new equipment we're getting, uh, how we can um, distribute these, uh, move from area to area with the notices about people being, or their dogs are being watched, um, and how we then actually see the, the calculate the impact of that would be very important. Um, could I also, there were other matters uh, in the, the papers that you had, which are straightforward report back in areas. Might you agree that we report those in the minutes? Agreed. Or we report them right? Yeah. Um, can we ha um, have any? Oh, yes, and then we have any other business, but everybody. Yes, yeah, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I apologise, I was late. I was caught in trouble.
you know, we're not even for social work, just producing leaflets, for the sake of producing leaflets uh, to distribute. Even when we don't know whether the people distributing them are actually on the living wage. So, can we fill, we are going to actually take this back. One of the options would be your option, that we actually <coughs> ask people advice about the format and the content, content, even though we said we shouldn't do that. And the other is that we may think this was a brave attempt um, and that, that we should actually signal an ex-passing and spend our money doing something else. Uh, is that, are you happy with that? Yeah, I mean, I think this, it's a work in progress. Yeah, well, and I, I accept, mean, we have, we I accept have, that, but as you know, I stepped back because I thought, well, let, let, you know, let them get on with it. And, you know, but, you know, you know to the only other point I'd make is before you came in, Paul, Joe yeah. reported some yeah. positive comments we've had back from yeah. a number of residents. Yeah. Of so there are obviously yeah. mixed, mixed yeah. views. Absolutely. Yeah. You can't please all the people. No, and, and it's always difficult to please people. Yeah. My wife says that, but um, I accept that point. <laughs> But you know, I do I do regret stepping back and, and not staying in touch with it. And I, I would be happy to see a draft if it continues. How many are going out? Well, when we say we've got some positive responses, we do need to compare that with 40,000. <laughs> um, um, it's going out build. Yeah, it's just a, just an idea really. Um, would it be useful if we're going to have and continue with this that we put some useful phone numbers in for people? Maybe change the police number, the fire brigade number, and so on. There's a lot of people out there who do have problems, but they don't need to ring up or don't always get in touch with them. And we do have 40,000 people there. These are positive suggestions. They are. Build it. We have one. Yes. Yes, I'll check. I may just ask one thing. I know you've moved away from ASB, but there is an action plan in there for the constituency to do that before Christmas. And I wondered whether it would be it would be pertinent given the work Tony's doing that actually we use some of that money in the Birkenhead area like it was intended and measure it before and after effects with the with the existing resources that are there, just with that thirty five thousand pounds or whether that would be something you would, the group would I agree, Mark. It's a lot of money. Um, there's all big question marks over now. And what I thought we agreed, before, before, just to affirm your support, I thought we were going to take this plan back and look at it at, in the light of what can we begin to present to us. I think I was just picking up the fact that the manager from McDonald's is saying, Dan, is about that version. We can still do that piece of work, with Tony, and I'm happy to do that. But we can, we can get on and start doing some of that, that, that diversion activity now to, to try and relieve some of those pressures that are out there. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we may be able to so radically reform this document that the <coughs> cheer goes up in both of them as it goes through people's letterboxes. It might, might be, if the public thought we could spend that 35k counting our social behaviour at Mark's point, they might actually give a cheer for that use of resources that way. Right. We're going to take that one away. I can sell it with you. We'll come back to you. All right. Uh, Joe, any other business for us? Uh, yes, we have got an invitation um, inviting people uh, to a session hosted by Peter Bibby, and it's to promote and give information about the new youth zone, which is for the Hive, and um, it's next Tuesday at 6 p.m. on. The 3rd of March at Edgerton House and Freshwood will be provided. So everyone's welcome to that. Next Tuesday, alright? How are we posting that? Yep. And the final thing is uh, there's a new community grant available and it's from uh, Burbo Bank, which is a wind farm company, Dong Energy, and they're inviting community groups to make applications um, up to £30,000 for community projects. Um, it's 235k. And it was three areas, parts of Liverpool, parts of the Wirral, uh, up into up until Birkenhead, and parts of North Wales. Um, so if anyone wants details of that, if you could just email um, Andrew and myself, we can send you the map to see whether your group fits into that and uh, the eligibility criteria. Yeah, what, what, what sort of thing? Yeah, we'll do. It's, um, yeah, it's general criteria, any community group in the area. 
area for community projects, capital or revenue, but I'll send them out to you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite a restricted um, space between the three areas, but you know, there's some money there that you're very good at spent on all of all councils. So all councils should have everybody. Yeah. Thank you.